I found myself back at Sound on Sound. I love going through these old articles, and this one was about the HDSP 9632 PCI interface, and got me interested. It did so much that I went to the RME web zone, and I'm looking around, and I'm like, hey, that's neat. It's 529, and there's a buy now button. The buy now button works. I'm curious at this point because the HDSP AIO is $899. This is not a cheap piece of kit. I had to find out what the differences between the two were. Turns out it's not much. It's basically the PCI Express interface and slightly lower latencies. Okay. You know what's going to happen? Yeah. This happened. I'm on eBay. I found one. I didn't pay $199 for it. I get it for like $160. We haggled a little bit. I also grabbed the balanced XLR breakout cable and I got it for 25 bucks. It's normally like $90. I didn't ask any questions. It was new and didn't have any blood stains. So I'll call that a win. But how does this work? This is a format converter. First and foremost, you're typically going to plug this in via light pipe, 8 out, into something like an ADA, 8 200, 8 in, 8 out. But if you want to use a microphone or a guitar, you absolutely have to have your own preamp and the breakout cables. And if you want to do digital, SPDIF, or a CPU. There's another cable on top of that. Are we good? I just wanted to clear that up. I don't want anyone buying one thinking you're going to plug a microphone or a guitar directly into it and it's going to work. Because it's not. This is what showed up in the post. This is in great shape. There are three board revisions. This is the second board revision from 2007. It's in great shape. All the caps are looking decidedly non-puffy. And you can see... Deutschland represent made in Germany. And uh, this is a very, very attractive PCB if you're into those types of things. But on the back, you have your 9-pin, um, 15-pin for your digital and analog. Plus, you're in two connectors for the light pipe. Speaking of analog, man. Speaking of analog. This. This is the analog breakout cable slash home defense unit. This is the Nutrick balanced Jeez, this thing's heavy, but it gives you two channels in, two channels out over XLR. It's great. You have an option for MIDI. If you're still using, you know, hardware MIDI devices that are not USB. And this, my new favorite thing, the most over-engineered uh, headphone jack in existence. It's great. I'm really excited to have that. But how are we going to hook this up? Because I don't have a retro battle station or anything like that. What I do have, just coincidence, is this MSI B350 Tomahawk motherboard, AM4. And it happens to have the AS Media ASM 1083 PCIe to PCI bridge. Okay, let's put it to the test. This is the internals of the Jackbox, the Dawn the Studio. And if you're curious, right to left, that's a 10 gig NIC. That is a Firewire card. And that's an NVIDIA... Quadros something from way back in the day because it will not boot unless it has a video card in the motherboard. Yeah. Well, let's plug in the PCI card for the first time in probably a decade. It's got to have been at least 10 years since I've done this. And it went in. No issues. Uh, no clearance issues, I should say. I was a little worried about that because you can see the caps. They stick out quite a bit. But it's secured, and I just realized that um, our Theron was kind enough to send us this from our Amazon wishlist. Oh, I was not going to deny you that. Yep, after a few months, I finally pulled that off. But let's get to it. How does it work on Linux? What do we have to do? On Debian 10, you need Alsa Tools GUI and the Alsa firmware. Period. You got to get that installed or no joy will be had. But I'm going to go through the motions. Let's take a peek with also Mixer and see what controls we have. It's showing up. That's the Xilinx FPGA. We'll go down to the hammer phone. Everything's here. I mean, line in, phone, spit off, uh, your gain, your ADAT lock, sync, analog, auto sync, digital gain. You can select your you know sampling rate. Anything that you would expect to have is in the atrocious also Mixer UI. It's brilliant. But let's try something a bit more gooey. First things first, let's get it configured with HDSP comp. 
This thing is in mice type. These apps do not scale. They're from 2003, a time before 1080p was really a thing. But inside of this, you can set your sample clock, your spit of in, out, A, B, your world clock, if you're using the breakout cable, input levels, output levels, your phone levels, and it'll give you, you know, your spit of frequencies, sync checks, everything you would expect to have. Yeah, 2003, how retro. Let's close that, because the other piece of kit, you absolutely have to use this at some point, like every time you want to use the card. This is the HDSP mixer, and you can use up to three cards in one system. But this is going to be all of your ins, all of your outs, and just however you want to get it set up. But you have to run this in some way, shape, form, or fashion before running a DAW or anything else. But you have the option to say presets, factory reset. It's lovely, but it's very tiny. Moving on to Cadence. Um, I don't typically use Cadence. I suggest that you try it at home because it's about the easiest way to go about it. These are all factory default settings because I want to see how it's going to work out of the box for you at home. The only catch with this was periods, your buffer. That has to be two. You can set it anything else. It's just not going to work. These are your basic real-time priorities and all that. We're going to do 48K 128. That's where I like to start things. Speaking of start, let's tap that. Head over to Cadia. That's kind of what you would expect, right? We have your ins and outs, but this is a little flipped compared to your normal interface because one through eight, that's all digital. That's your eight at. Normally that would be your analog one through eight, but outside of that nine and 10 AES CPU and 11 and 12, it's going to be your analog along with a MIDI in and out. So everything's working. Speaking of working, this is just one of our sample sessions. I just like to run it for like 10 minutes, see if we're going to get any crazy X runs, a couple of tracks, mixes of analog, digital, about 27 plugins. No problems. Speaking of latency though, man, look at this. That's insane at 44.1, but 48K, it gets real interesting. 9.92 round trip at 128. Now, when we go to higher, higher sample rates like 96, 128, we're only dealing with ADAT because of the nature of the device, unfortunately. But they're great. Ta-da! Well, there we have it. The RME 9632 can, in fact, Linux in 2021. They've been making them for 18 years. For a reason. In fact, I like it so much, it's still in Jackbox, and it has been for the last month. It's what we're using to record the shows now. But let's talk pros, let's talk cons. The big one? Big pro. Wicked low round-trip latency. The best interface I have in this rack can achieve about 13 milliseconds round trip latency at a buffer size of 128. The RME 9632 can do it in seven. It's PCI magic. Huge fan of that. Now, along with that, you get the rock solid stability from RME. You also get the flawless analog digital conversion. It's just there. And to top it off, drivers built into the kernel. They're also nothing really to do. Plug it in, get started, and you're good. Now, let's talk about the cons. Because it is PCI in 2021. You can kind of get wrecked on that because you're not going to find a mainstream board currently made that's going to have PCI holes in it. You're just not. But you dig around, you can find something older. All right, good to go. Also, no preamp. If I'm plugging a microphone, if I'm plugging a bass guitar or anything like that into the 9632, I am going to need a separate preamp. You know, be it microphone direct, this is a golden age uh, pre-73. Nice and transformery. Gets the job done. But the analog breakout cables, this is another con. They are limited to two in and two out. That can be incredibly limiting for some people. You're not going to mic up a drum kit with one of these unless you're using the ADAT expansion. Now, if you want additional analog ins and outs, they got you covered for a price. Four in, four out. Those are going to be $300 a pop from RME for the expansion boards. Now... Speaking of that price, this thing, brand new, which you can get from Amazon, link in the description, $500, well, 500 plus, new in box with warranty and all that, but you can still get one brand new in 2021. Now, I'd suggest going to the used market where you can find it between $150 and $300 in sites like eBay and Reverb, also a link in the description, but that's up to you. You have to have a lot of random things in place in order to be able to make use of one of these or a very, very particular use case. Would I recommend getting one? A resounding, definite, maybe. 
that's the best I can do with this. Uh, quality wise, you're not going to beat it for the price, especially if you can find one for around 200 bucks. But again, you have to keep in mind the limitations and the big honking one being PCI. Now, I know somebody's going to bring this up, so let me go ahead and say it. Yes, I am fully aware that they make PCI by one to PCI, well, PCIe by one to PCI expansion breakout cables. I've seen reports of these working with those, but I've also seen a dead 9632 on eBay listed for parts with, I tried using a breakout cable. So please keep that in mind. That's going to do it for this. I got to get out of here, but uh, check these people out. These are the people who make shows like this possible. They are our patrons over at patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. We do a bunch of stuff. We do a Linux Gamecast weekly. Come check that out Saturday. That's going to be live Wednesdays. Regular Linux in use with slices of pie, and it's brilliant. And we also have a little budget left over to choose something hyper focused, like interfacing Linux, to answer some of the more side questions. And if you have any of those, drop them in the comments. That's going to do it. I always close this out because I always beat it. Most importantly, just get out there, make something awesome. All right. Bye bye.